If you like the content of the channel, be sure to go below and get your free books and be sure to subscribe to my provocative hustler newsletter right here. Yeah, get it. And if you're on mobile, there's an eye around here somewhere. You can tap that and go there also. With that, let me tell you what's going on. Last year, I worked with Uber. I was an Uber partner. Only did it for six weeks, but I got a lifetime worth of stories in those six weeks. And this is one. Player, player, girls night out. Take one. This was on a Saturday. It was early in the day because as I got into my Uber route, I figured out what were the best places for me to pick up people on Saturday. And incidentally, they were in the neighborhood they used to live in. I got this call and it was, I was in Buckhead and it was off of Howell Mill. So it was about four-ish, four-ish, five-ish. So I go to this house and it's off one of the off streets of Howell Mill. And I pull up, there's these two cars in the driveway and it's one of the older houses with the one garage, but don't let that fool you. Houses in that neighborhood are 500 up to 2 million. These two ladies come out after somewhat of a wait because I'm sitting in the driveway maybe three or four minutes and you know that's nothing because people are doing stuff and like I said these two chicks come out and they get in and they're like hey and I'm like hey how are you doing it's nice ride nice ride well thank you so they both get in the back seat and they give me the destination and we just start talking about life start talking about stuff and I just, you know, was really, really bold, probably too bold to be an Uber driver. So I said, what are you two divorced ladies doing on this fine Saturday, right? And they were like, how did you know we were divorced? Do we have the divorce say, look? I said, no. It's this time of day on Saturday. I saw toys in the yard. So if there's toys in the yard and you two are free, more than likely, the kids are with their fathers for the weekend, and this is girls' night out. And they were like, oh, the man is intelligent. I like an intelligent man. All right, this is where the story gets crazy interesting. I mean, crazy interesting because they were like, so you're so smart. Are you divorced? I said, I am. And then it's like, how long have you been divorced? I said, longer than I was married. I was like, woo and the little one. The little one was the troublemaker. She was the troublemaker, I could tell. It's always the small ones. And she said, I can't wait to get there. I said, oh, you're in that four to five year mark. She said, four years exactly. And she looked at her friend right there. I was like, who is this guy? So we start talking. And then we start sharing war stories. It's just like, well, well, what mine did was we were married for 10 years. And he started fucking his secretary. I was like, oh, that's not good. She said, no, that's why I ended up with the house. And then the other one, was she was kind of quiet. She was kind of cool and we had more of a different conversation. I was like, oh, you've been divorced much longer and you're kind of comfortable with it. She said, pretty much. And then she did a little finger like, yeah, she's still bitter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not bitter. I'm not. I'm not bitter. That's what she kept saying. And then she's like, so what's your story? You heard our story. So what did you do? Did you cheat on your wife? I said, no. She left me and she actually cheated on me. And they said, oh, we're really sorry. It happens. It was a long time ago. Then she's like, well, I don't get it with men. You have a good thing at home. Then you go out and because something's young, you just like it. And I was like, how old are you? And she said, <laughs> the dreaded question, how old do you think that I am? And I looked at her and I said, I'll go for it. You are probably 42, but people think you're 35. And she said, okay. And you're like, why'd you say that? I was like, you don't look 42, but your attitude is about 50. You, you act like the bitter old woman. Like, 
Mrs. Doubtfire on crack. <laughs> Her friends started cracking up. And she said, yeah, she's a crabby Abby. And I was like, well, you're just going to have to let that shit go. This is how I used to talk to people, right? And I was just wondering how I maintained a 4.9 rating. And she said, like, okay, what's your story? And well, she said, okay, you already told me a story. But so what are you doing now? It's like, how old is your girlfriend? Because you got one. I could tell. I was like, how could you tell? It's just like, you're just too happy. <laughs> I was like, what does that supposed to mean? And I was like, no, she's like 32. And he's like, player, player. And the conversation got a little freaky. And she's like, I just miss being fucked on the regular. And I was like, okay. I didn't expect that to come out of Krabby Abby. And she's like, well, you know, the routine, the certainty. But why do you men do that stuff. Why do you do that stuff? You have something good at home and then you got to mess up the program. And she's like, you're a player. I'm, just, I'm not a player. I just crush a lot. And then she's like, oh, you listen to Big Punisher, right? The appropriation of black culture is widespread, I, I tell you. Because if you looked at her, you wouldn't even think that she knew who the hell Big Pun was, but she did. <laughs> and she started bursting into lyrics because she loved that song. And at that point, we were driving up to their destination. Then we just kept talking for like five minutes. I had turned off the meter and everything. And I said, look, you should hang out with us. And I was like, really? He's like, yeah, you're a good conversationalist. And to hear the rest of it, you'll have to wait for part two. All right. If you like the stories, subscribe to the channel. And if you want to talk to me and get your... 10 minute talk i got a special for you look for the annotation and look for the dot and with that i'll see you in the next session